Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, once again, thank you very much for being available for the fifth and uh, last uh, uh, session of the uh, virtual symposium on acute fluximylitis, what we have learned in order to be prepared. Uh, this session is going to be extremely, extremely exciting. It's very uh, important to have a good understanding of the orthopedic and surgical treatments in acute fluximylitis, and that will be the main focus uh, today. Uh, this session is uh, going to be uh, very active in terms of uh, questions and answers, and we have the great advantage to have a very good number of speakers from different institutions around the United States with extensive expertise on orthopedic and surgical treatments in acute fluximylitis. Uh, once again, we appreciate very much the time of effort of our speakers. Uh, many of them are uh, quite busy and actually some of them are, uh, are so busy that at uh, this moment, some of them are escaping the operating room just to come and be present in this symposium. And again, we appreciate very much that effort. Uh, this symposium is organized by uh, the Acute Fluximylitis Working Group and the John Hopkins uh, Myelitis Myelopathy Center and the Kennedy Krieger Institute. And I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, acknowledge the great work from uh, my colleague, Christina Sadowski, uh, who has been my uh, partner in crime for putting together this uh, symposium, along with many of our colleagues around the country and uh, many members uh, uh, like you that are present in this symposium. Um, the symposium is uh, also very well supported by the uh, Siegel uh, uh, Renner Immune uh, Association, uh, formerly known as the Transient Myelitis Association. Uh, uh, SRNA has been a very great uh, 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 resource for supporting all the efforts around acute fluximylitis, and we really appreciate uh, uh, that support. Uh, the Bart McLean uh, uh, Fund for Neuroimmunological Research uh, uh, at John Hopkins uh, has been a, a very uh, important source of uh, uh, funding and support for all of our efforts, understanding myelitis and myelopathies. And uh, we appreciate very much uh, that uh, uh, support from uh, the Bar McLean uh, Fund. Our colleagues at the Children National uh, uh, in Washington, D.C. has been also uh, partners in the organization of this symposium, and we appreciate very much uh, 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 their support. Um, I'd like to emphasize today uh, uh, in this introduction uh, about the network uh, uh, that is around the country with different institutions, different group of physicians and researchers that are working all together around the acute fluximylitis working group to generate consensus and understanding of acute fluximylitis and particularly to help families and patients uh, uh, and basically uh, 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 put a major effort to uh, make sure that patients are very well served, are diagnosed uh, on time, are getting the treatments on time, and particularly that the long road for rehabilitation and treatments are accomplished uh, with uh, good collaboration, network, and coordination. Uh, the SRNA has a very good group of uh, uh, people uh, working with families, and I invited you to uh, visit the uh, SRNA website uh, for uh, learning more about uh, rare neuroimmunological symposium, uh, neuroimmunological disorders, including AFM. And today, uh, I'd like to emphasize the work that Roberta uh, uh, and Andrea uh, are uh, basically the major uh, pillars of uh, making sure that the logistic and the success of this symposium is, 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 is good. And they have been working with many of the speakers just to make sure that uh, the uh, 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 slides and the projections and everything is uh, um, very well uh, established. And thank you, Roberta. Thank you, Andrea, for that. Uh, I'd like to talk about the National Institute of Health, Acute Fluximalitis Natural History Group. 
Uh, the natural history study is already going, and uh, if there is any question about the NIH study uh, for AFM, uh, Jill Griffin at UAB uh, is a very good resource for information. Uh, the CDC uh, has been very critical for uh, uh, awareness, education around uh, the topic of AFM, and particularly for uh, AFM surveillance. So if there are questions, please visit the website of the CDC and, and look for uh, more information about what they are doing and what is there for around uh, 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 acute fluxomyelitis. So this is the last and the fifth uh, symposium. Uh, it's going to be focused in orthopedic and surgical treatment. Uh, in the past four symposium, we went from discussing issues related with diagnosis and acute management to critical care, uh, to uh, discuss pathogenesis, uh, virology and immunology. And recently we have a very nice productive session on management of long-term consequence and particularly rehabilitation issues. But today, the main topic is going to be on orthopedic and surgical uh, treatment. Uh, we have a great group of speakers, but uh, if you like to go back to the symposium uh, 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 that we had in the past uh, few weeks, you are able to do so just by uh, uh, Googling uh, AFM Virtual Symposium YouTube and all lectures are available in a YouTube uh, uh, format. So please take advantage of that and please uh, share this information with uh, families, parents, and colleagues who are working around the topic of acute flux in my life. Um, before I transition to my colleague, uh, um, Christina Sadowski, I'd like to emphasize uh, uh, once again the great effort uh, given by many of our speakers since uh, June 5th for uh, the symposium. Uh, many of them uh, actually uh, uh, took extra time to participate in the meeting, organize the slides, and basically provide an excellent uh, source of information that is not, was not only given during that precise moment of day, but is going to be available all the time in the web. Uh, because all of those lectures, you may get access to, uh, uh, to those by YouTube. And finally, uh, the topic today is going to be uh, extremely helpful for families and parents uh, to understand the different uh, uh, options uh, available from orthopedic and surgery. And I, uh, uh, there are uh, two major blocks of uh, discussion. The first block is dedicated to orthopedics, and the second block is dedicated to uh, surgical nerve transfer uh, 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 approaches in the rescue of uh, limbs and muscle groups that are lost after AFM. And at the end, we are going to have a very productive uh, discussion with the families and parents uh, of patients with AFM and conclude with the uh, 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 wrap up session. But I will allow Dr. Uh, Christina Sadowski to uh, introduce our speakers for uh, this afternoon. Christina. Thank you so very much. I hope I can uh, see the slides that you're sharing because they're kind of small here. But anyway, this is such an exciting, sad and happy day. It is happy because it is truly, it was a, a major effort to put together the symposium and we are so, so grateful for, uh, to everybody that uh, contributed. It is sad because some of us got used to uh, having something to do on, uh, on Fridays, something that is enriching and uh, both in towards our soul and enriching in our knowledge. Um, this being the last session of the AFM Symposium, I subscribe to what Roberta and, and Carlos said, please make it interactive. Uh, I know that there are so many questions around there, uh, out there about uh, the care, the etiology, the management treatment and so forth. So uh, not that this, this is the last option, the last session, in which you can um, ask questions, but it is the last one in this specific uh, uh, virtual environment. So please, please, please do ask questions and uh, and uh, interact with us. 
Uh, we have exciting subjects that target the long-term consequences of AFM related to paralysis. And we are going to talk about very novel and aggressive approaches in, in re restoring function. So Carlos, next slide. I know the next slide is going to introduce Dr. Riley Bovey, who uh, not only that uh, she is a neurologist, but she is also a parent of a child with uh, AFM. So her view uh, comes as from both sides, uh, which uh, it, it is rare to happen in any uh, condition and even rarer in a rare condition. So, um, after Dr. Bovey, we're going to have, next slide. We're going to uh, have uh, Dr. Andrea Bauer. Dr. Bauer is going to uh, talk about the role of tendon transfers. Um, she is uh, at Boston Children's and she's going to share her experience as Boston is one of the centers that is in the uh, AFM working group. Next slide. Dr. Paul Sponseller um, is uh, very well known. Uh, he's a professor of orthopedic surgery and he is involved in the care of children with paralysis, including the children with the acute flaccid paralysis. He, de he delivers exceptional orthopedic care that deals with scoliosis, with limb lengthening, uh, with um, hip subluxations. He will be talking specifically about scoliosis and shoulder management today. Uh, with Next slide. Dr. Colin Watkins. Uh, talking specifically about limb leg discrepancy, hip uh, subluxation and uh, contractures. Next slide. The uh, panel that's going to uh, follow the first uh, block of speakers is going to uh, um, answer your questions and it's going to be concentrating on the orthopedic uh, long-term management and the overall view of a neurologist and researcher that is also a parent uh, for a child with AFM. The second panel is going to start thereafter. And next slide. Going to start with Dr. Bulsberg, which uh, hopefully he's going to be able to, to join us. He's right now in surgery, uh, but he will be talking uh, about the nerve transplants um, because his experience in both, uh, in both upper and lower limbs, he's going to have to present that view, but the specific focus on the lower limb is going to be done by Dr. Amy Moore, next slide, who has uh, extensive, extensive uh, experience in managing um, lower limbs uh, in children with AFM uh, in uh, several types of surgical uh, interventions. And then next slide. Dr. Zlatlo uh, from uh, Philadelphia is going to uh, uh, talk uh, about his experience in renovating the diaphragm, that important muscle that is uh, helping children to breathe. He also probably uh, will comment on his experience with nerve uh, uh, transplants in the upper limbs. Next slide. Then the, um, the get together session uh, in which you have 20 minutes to ask every single questions that you ever had about uh, nerve transplants. And then next slide. Well, then we're going to have a parents and family uh, panel. So this is the part in which uh, uh, the 
interactive nature of this symposium is even more important. Um, there are questions, there are answers, that, there are heart-wrenching uh, testimonials, and all of them um, can be uh, personalized by asking questions in, uh, during this panel. So please, please, please do so. Uh, the whole session, the last of the last, will end up with a wrap up from Dr. Carlos Pardo and myself. And we thank you for being part of this uh, experience with us. We love sharing what uh, we know. Uh, we love also being here for everyone, uh, for questions, for problem solving, for expanding uh, the knowledge. And uh, now I'm going to move further to the first speaker, Dr. Riley Bovey. Uh, Riley, can you join us?